Have you ever felt like you're constantly chasing after something? Maybe it's success, love, or happiness. Picture this. You work tirelessly towards a goal, pouring your heart and soul into it. But despite all your efforts, you don't achieve what you set out for. That feeling of disappointment can be crushing. You start to question yourself, your abilities, and your worth. But what if I told you that the key to true contentment lies not in the outcome, but in the journey itself? Welcome to Wisdom Woven, where we unravel the mysteries of life and explore the profound teachings of Buddhism. In this video, we'll delve into a fundamental concept of Buddhism, the importance of not fixating on results. Think about it. When we become too attached to specific outcomes, we set ourselves up for disappointment. It's like trying to catch the wind in a net futile and exhausting. Instead, Buddhism teaches us to shift our focus from the destination to the path we walk to get there. Imagine you're baking a cake. You meticulously follow the recipe, adding all the right ingredients and mixing them with care. But when you take the cake out of the oven, it doesn't rise as you expected. You could dwell on the disappointment of your flat cake, or you could savor the joy of the baking process. The aroma of vanilla, the warmth of the oven, the anticipation of that first bite. This simple analogy encapsulates the essence of Buddhist philosophy. It's not about the outcome, but the journey. So, why do we often find ourselves fixated on results? Perhaps it's our society's obsession with success and achievement, constantly bombarding us with messages that measure our worth by external standards. We're conditioned to believe that our happiness hinges on reaching certain milestones, getting a promotion, finding the perfect partner, or owning a dream house. But as Buddhists would argue, this external validation is fleeting and ultimately unfulfilling. True happiness, they say, comes from within, from cultivating inner peace, contentment, and compassion. So, in this video series, we invite you to explore a different perspective, one that encourages you to let go of attachment to outcomes and embrace the beauty of the present moment. Join us on this journey as we discover the wisdom of not focusing on results. Remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe to Wisdom Woven for more enlightening content. Lesson 1. Understanding Attachment Why do we feel so attached to outcomes? Picture this. You work tirelessly towards a goal, investing your time, energy, and emotions into it. You start anticipating the result, your mind fixating on the outcome. Whether it's getting a promotion, winning a competition, or achieving a personal milestone, we often tie our happiness to these results. But what if I told you that this attachment to outcomes might be causing more harm than good? Consider a child building a sandcastle on the beach. They pour their heart into it, shaping each turret and moat with care. But as the tide rolls in, their creation is washed away. The child may feel disappointment, but soon they're back at it, building anew. This innocence reflects a crucial lesson. Attachment leads to suffering. In Buddhism, attachment is seen as the root of suffering, known as dukkha. It's the clinging to people, possessions, and outcomes as if they were permanent fixtures in our lives. But the truth is, everything is impermanent. Nothing stays the same forever, and clinging to the illusion of permanence only leads to disappointment and frustration. Think about your own life. How often have you felt distressed when things didn't go as planned? Maybe you didn't get that job you were aiming for, or a relationship didn't work out as expected. These disappointments stem from our attachment to specific outcomes. But what if we could learn to let go of this attachment? What if we could find peace and contentment regardless of the results? Imagine a river flowing effortlessly downstream. It encounters obstacles along the way, rocks, branches, and bends in the path. Yet, it doesn't resist. It simply flows around them, adapting to whatever comes its way. This is the essence of non-attachment, 
the ability to flow with life's ups and downs without clinging to specific outcomes. Non-attachment doesn't mean you stop caring or striving for excellence. Instead, it's about freeing yourself from the shackles of attachment and embracing the present moment fully. It's about focusing on the journey rather than fixating on the destination. Take a moment to reflect on your own attachments. What are you holding onto tightly? Is it a desire for success, recognition, or approval? Notice how these attachments weigh you down, creating unnecessary stress and anxiety. Now, imagine releasing those attachments, surrendering them to the flow of life. By letting go of attachment, you open yourself up to a world of possibilities. You become more resilient, adaptable, and at peace with whatever life brings your way. So, the next time you find yourself clinging to a specific outcome, remember the wisdom of non-attachment. Embrace the journey, surrender to the flow, and watch as a newfound sense of freedom and joy fills your life. Lesson 2. The Nature of Impermanence Have you ever paused to watch the clouds drifting across the sky, or marveled at the beauty of a sunset? In these fleeting moments, we are reminded of the constant ebb and flow of life. This is the essence of impermanence, the understanding that everything in the universe is in a state of constant change. Think about your own life. Are you the same person you were five years ago? Ten years ago? Our bodies, our thoughts, our emotions, they are all subject to the passage of time. And while change can sometimes be difficult to accept, it is also what gives life its richness and depth. Consider the seasons. Each year we witness the cycle of birth, growth, decay, and renewal. The leaves fall from the trees in autumn, only to be reborn in the spring. In the same way, our own lives are marked by cycles of growth and transformation. Buddhism teaches us to embrace impermanence rather than resist it. When we cling too tightly to things, whether it's our possessions, our relationships, or our own sense of identity, we inevitably suffer. But when we learn to let go and flow with the currents of change, we find a profound sense of freedom and peace. Imagine holding a handful of sand. The harder you grasp it, the more it slips through your fingers. But if you loosen your grip and allow the sand to flow freely, you can experience its beauty in a whole new way. This is the essence of impermanence, learning to let go of our attachments and embrace the ever-changing nature of life. One of the key teachings of Buddhism is the concept of anicca, or impermanence. This idea reminds us that nothing in the world is permanent or lasting. Our possessions, our relationships, even our own bodies, they are all subject to change. But far from being a cause for despair, impermanence is actually a source of liberation. When we recognize that nothing in the world is permanent, we are freed from the burden of attachment. We can enjoy the present moment without worrying about the future or clinging to the past. Think about a beautiful flower in bloom. It may seem like it will last forever, but eventually, it will wither and fade away. And yet, in its fleeting beauty, there is a profound lesson to be learned. Just as the flower blooms and fades, so too do our own lives unfold in a never-ending cycle of change. In the words of the Buddha himself, this existence of ours is as transient as autumn clouds. To watch the birth and death of beings is like looking at the movements of a dance. A lifetime is like a flash of lightning in the sky, rushing by like a torrent down a steep mountain. This is the reality of impermanence, a truth that has the power to transform our lives if we are willing to embrace it. So the next time you find yourself struggling with change, remember the wisdom of impermanence. Instead of resisting the flow of life, learn to dance with it. In doing so, you will discover a newfound sense of freedom, joy, and peace. Lesson 3. Letting go of expectations. In life, we often set expectations for ourselves and others. We envision how things should be and strive for those outcomes. 
But what if I told you that clinging too tightly to these expectations can bring us more suffering than joy? Imagine you're planning a picnic. You've pictured a perfect sunny day, laughter with friends, and delicious food. However, when the day arrives, it's pouring rain. Instead of enjoying the moment for what it is, you feel disappointed and frustrated. This simple scenario illustrates how expectations can lead to disappointment and dissatisfaction. Welcome back to Wisdom Woven. Remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe as we delve into the profound wisdom of Buddhism. Now, let's explore the concept of letting go of expectations and how it can lead to a more fulfilling life. Buddhism teaches us about the impermanence of all things. Nothing in life is permanent, including our expectations. By attaching ourselves too rigidly to specific outcomes, we set ourselves up for disappointment when things don't go as planned. However, by letting go of these expectations, we can open ourselves up to a greater sense of freedom and peace. Imagine holding a tightly clenched fist. It's tense, rigid, and unable to grasp anything new. Now, imagine opening your hand, letting go of what you're holding on to. Suddenly, your hand is free to receive new opportunities, experiences, and joys. Similarly, when we release our expectations, we free ourselves from unnecessary stress and suffering, allowing room for serendipity and spontaneity in our lives. Letting go of expectations doesn't mean giving up on our goals or ambitions. Instead, it's about approaching life with a sense of openness and flexibility. It's about accepting that things may not always go according to plan and being okay with that. This doesn't mean resigning ourselves to a passive existence, but rather embracing the flow of life and adapting to whatever comes our way. Think of a river flowing downstream. It doesn't resist the rocks or obstacles in its path. It simply flows around them. In the same way, when we let go of our expectations, we become more adaptable and resilient in the face of challenges. We learn to navigate life's twists and turns with grace and ease, rather than being swept away by disappointment and frustration. Letting go of expectations also allows us to fully appreciate the present moment. When we're constantly fixated on the future, striving for a certain outcome, we miss out on the beauty and richness of what's happening right now. Life is happening in the present moment, and when we let go of our expectations, we can fully immerse ourselves in the here and now. Take a moment to close your eyes and simply breathe. Notice the sensations of your breath as it enters and leaves your body. Notice the sounds around you, the sensations in your body, the thoughts in your mind. In this moment, there are no expectations, no judgments, just pure awareness. This is the power of letting go and being present. In Buddhism, the concept of non-attachment is closely related to letting go of expectations. Non-attachment doesn't mean indifference or apathy. Rather, it's about experiencing life fully without being consumed by our desires and attachments. When we let go of our expectations, we cultivate a sense of inner freedom and contentment that isn't dependent on external circumstances. Practice letting go of expectations in your daily life. Notice when you feel yourself becoming attached to a particular outcome and gently remind yourself to let go. Embrace the uncertainty and unpredictability of life, knowing that it's all part of the journey. As you release your grip on expectations, you'll discover a newfound sense of peace and joy in simply being. Lesson for embracing the process. Have you ever found yourself so fixated on the end goal that you forget to appreciate the journey? It's like rushing through a beautiful landscape just to reach the destination. But what if the true beauty lies in the journey itself? This is where the wisdom of not focusing on results comes into play. Imagine you're baking a cake. You have a vision of the delicious dessert you want to enjoy at the end. But as you gather the ingredients and mix them together, something magical happens. The aroma fills the air, the batter comes to life, and each step becomes a moment of joy and anticipation. It's not just about the end result, 
it's about savoring every step of the process. Life works in a similar way. We set goals, we strive for success, but sometimes we forget to enjoy the process. We become so consumed by the outcome that we overlook the lessons, the growth, and the experiences along the way. But what if we shifted our focus from the destination to the journey itself? Embracing the process means being fully present in each moment, whether it's a moment of struggle or a moment of triumph. It means accepting that life is a series of ups and downs, twists and turns, and finding beauty in every twist and turn. Think about a time when you achieved something great. Did you realize that the joy and satisfaction you felt weren't just about reaching the goal, but about the obstacles you overcame, the lessons you learned, and the person you became in the process? When we let go of our attachment to results, we free ourselves from the anxiety and stress of chasing after something that may or may not happen. Instead, we learn to trust the journey, to trust ourselves, and to trust in the unfolding of life. Embracing the process also means letting go of perfectionism. It's about accepting that mistakes and failures are not signs of weakness, but opportunities for growth and learning. Each setback is a chance to course correct, to refine our approach, and to become better versions of ourselves. So, the next time you find yourself fixating on the end goal, take a step back and remind yourself to enjoy the journey. Take pleasure in the small victories, the unexpected detours, and the moments of grace. Because in the end, it's not about reaching the summit. It's about the adventure of getting there. And that, my friend, is where the true magic lies. Lesson 5. Cultivating Mindfulness Mindfulness is like a gentle breeze that sweeps through the cluttered corridors of our minds, bringing clarity and peace. Picture this. You're sitting in a garden, surrounded by blooming flowers and lush greenery. As you close your eyes, you focus solely on the sensation of your breath, inhaling, exhaling. This is mindfulness in action, the art of being fully present in the moment. In our fast-paced world, it's easy to get caught up in the whirlwind of thoughts, worries, and distractions. But mindfulness offers us a sanctuary, a place where we can anchor ourselves amidst the chaos. By tuning into our breath, sensations, and surroundings, we cultivate a profound awareness of the here and now. Imagine driving a car without paying attention to the road ahead you'd be lost, vulnerable to accidents and wrong turns. Similarly, living without mindfulness leaves us susceptible to the pitfalls of autopilot living, reacting impulsively, getting swept away by emotions, and losing touch with our inner selves. However, mindfulness isn't about suppressing thoughts or chasing after elusive states of bliss. It's about observing our experiences with kindness and curiosity without judgment. Whether it's the warmth of sunlight on our skin or the chatter of our inner critic, mindfulness invites us to greet each moment with open arms. Through mindfulness practices like meditation, we learn to train our attention, gently guiding it back to the present whenever it wanders off. Like a muscle, our ability to be mindful strengthens with regular practice. And as we cultivate this skill, we become more adept at navigating life's ups and downs with grace and resilience. Imagine a storm raging outside while you sit by the fireplace, cocooned in warmth and serenity. That's the power of mindfulness. It doesn't change the external circumstances, but it transforms how we relate to them. Instead of being swept away by the storm, we become the calm amidst the chaos. Mindfulness isn't just confined to meditation cushions or quiet moments of reflection. It's a way of life, an invitation to infuse every action, every interaction with presence and intention. Whether we're washing dishes, walking in nature, or conversing with a friend, mindfulness enriches our experiences, imbuing them with a sense of depth and richness. In the busyness of our daily lives, it's easy to overlook the beauty and wonder that surround us. But mindfulness reignites our sense of wonder, allowing us to rediscover the magic in the mundane. 
A simple flower becomes a masterpiece of nature, a passing cloud, a dance of light and shadow. Moreover, mindfulness fosters a deeper connection with ourselves and others. By cultivating a compassionate awareness of our thoughts, feelings, and sensations, we develop greater empathy and understanding towards ourselves and those around us. This ripple effect of mindfulness extends beyond our individual lives, creating a more harmonious and compassionate world. In essence, mindfulness is a gift, a precious jewel that lies within each one of us, waiting to be uncovered. It's not a destination to reach or a goal to achieve, but a journey, a lifelong exploration of the depths of our own being. So let us embrace this journey with open hearts and open minds, knowing that every moment holds the potential for transformation and awakening. Lesson 6. Practicing non-attachment. In our journey of understanding non-attachment, let's begin with a simple analogy. Imagine holding a handful of sand. The tighter you grip it, the more it slips away from your grasp. Similarly, in life, the more we cling to things, the more we suffer. Non-attachment doesn't mean we stop caring. Instead, it invites us to hold things lightly, to appreciate them without relying on them for our happiness. It's like enjoying the beauty of a sunset without feeling sadness when it ends. Buddhism teaches us that everything is impermanent. Nothing stays the same forever. By recognizing this truth, we can let go of our attachment to outcomes, possessions, and even relationships. When we practice non-attachment, we free ourselves from the chains of craving and aversion. We no longer chase after what we desire or push away what we dislike. Instead, we learn to be present with whatever arises, without judgment or resistance. Imagine a river flowing effortlessly, unhindered by obstacles in its path. Non-attachment is like being that river, gracefully navigating the twists and turns of life without getting stuck on the banks. It's essential to understand that non-attachment doesn't mean indifference. We can still care deeply and engage fully in life's experiences. However, we do so with an open heart and a willingness to let go when necessary. By practicing non-attachment, we cultivate inner peace and resilience. We become less affected by the ups and downs of life, finding stability amidst chaos. In the practice of meditation, we observe our thoughts and emotions without getting caught up in them. This mindfulness helps us develop the skill of non-attachment, allowing thoughts to come and go like clouds passing through the sky. Non-attachment also extends to our relationships. Instead of seeking fulfillment from others, we learn to love unconditionally, appreciating them for who they are without expecting anything in return. When we let go of attachment, we discover a profound sense of freedom. We're no longer bound by the shackles of desire, fear, or ego, but instead, we're liberated to live authentically and joyfully. In the words of the Buddha, attachment leads to suffering. By practicing non-attachment, we break free from the cycle of suffering and open ourselves to a life of peace, contentment, and unconditional love. In summary, non-attachment is the art of letting go, of releasing our grip on the things that bind us. It's a practice of surrendering to the flow of life, trusting that everything unfolds as it should. As we embrace non-attachment, we discover a profound sense of freedom and peace within ourselves. Lesson 7, The Role of Detachment in Buddhism Detachment is a cornerstone of Buddhist philosophy, offering profound insights into navigating life's challenges with grace and wisdom. At its core, detachment is about loosening our grip on the outcomes of our actions, recognizing the transient nature of existence, and embracing a mindset of non-attachment. In Buddhist teachings, detachment doesn't mean indifference or apathy. Instead, it invites us to engage with life fully while releasing our fixation on specific outcomes. By letting go of attachment to desires and expectations, we free ourselves from the suffering that arises when things don't go as planned. 
Imagine holding a delicate butterfly in your palm. If you grasp too tightly, you risk harming it. But if you hold it gently, allowing it to flutter away when it's ready, you honor its natural beauty and essence. Similarly, detachment encourages us to hold our experiences lightly, appreciating them without trying to control or possess them. One of the fundamental Buddhist concepts related to detachment is impermanence. Everything in life, from the simplest pleasures to our most cherished relationships, is subject to change. By embracing impermanence, we learn to release our attachment to the past and future, finding liberation in the present moment. Detachment doesn't mean avoiding commitment or responsibility. Instead, it enables us to engage in the world with clarity and equanimity. When we're not bound by attachment, we can make decisions based on wisdom and compassion, rather than fear or selfishness. In practicing detachment, we cultivate a sense of inner freedom. We no longer depend on external circumstances or validation for our happiness. Instead, we discover a deep wellspring of contentment and peace that arises from within. Detachment also fosters resilience in the face of adversity. When we're not fixated on specific outcomes, setbacks and challenges become opportunities for growth and learning. We can adapt to change more readily, embracing life's fluctuations with courage and grace. Moreover, detachment fosters interconnectedness and compassion. When we recognize the impermanence of our own experiences, we develop empathy for the struggles of others. This empathy fuels our commitment to alleviate suffering and promote well-being for all beings. In essence, detachment in Buddhism is a path to profound liberation and awakening. It invites us to let go of the illusions of control and permanence, embracing the fluidity of existence with openness and humility. As we continue on our journey of self-discovery and spiritual growth, May we embody the wisdom of detachment, finding freedom in letting go in joy in embracing each moment as it unfolds. Lesson 8. Finding Inner Peace In the hustle and bustle of life, finding inner peace seems like chasing a distant dream. But what if I told you that it's within your grasp, waiting for you to discover it? Inner peace isn't just a concept. It's a state of being and Buddhism offers profound insights on how to attain it. Picture this. You're caught in a storm of stress, deadlines looming, and expectations weighing you down like heavy chains. Yet, amidst this chaos, there's a serene lake within you, untouched by the turmoil outside. That lake is your inner peace, waiting to be uncovered. Buddhism teaches us that inner peace isn't dependent on external circumstances. Instead, it's nurtured through practices like meditation and mindfulness. These tools help us quiet the restless chatter of our minds, allowing us to connect with our inner selves. Imagine sitting by a babbling brook, watching the water flow effortlessly over smooth stones. Your mind, too, can flow freely when you release the grip of worries and fears. This flow is where inner peace resides, in the gentle rhythm of your breath and the stillness of your being. It's like tending to a garden within you, pulling out the weeds of negativity and watering the flowers of positivity. As you cultivate this inner sanctuary, you'll find that peace blossoms like a radiant flower, spreading its fragrance throughout your life. Inner peace isn't about suppressing emotions or pretending everything is fine. It's about acknowledging the chaos while finding a calm center within yourself. Like a sturdy tree swaying in the wind, you can weather life's storms with grace and resilience. In the fast-paced world we live in, it's easy to get swept away by the currents of stress and anxiety. But Buddhism offers us an anchor, a refuge in the storm. Through practices like meditation and mindfulness, we can reconnect with our inner peace, restoring balance and harmony to our lives. Think of inner peace as a gentle breeze on a hot summer's day, refreshing and invigorating. It's not about escaping reality, but rather seeing it with clarity and equanimity. When we embrace this perspective, 
We can navigate life's ups and downs with ease and grace. So, how do we find this elusive inner peace? It starts with a simple shift in perspective, recognizing that true peace comes from within. Instead of chasing after external validation or material possessions, turn inward and cultivate the rich soil of your inner world. Just as a river finds its way back to the sea, you too can find your way back to peace. It's not about reaching some distant shore, but rather diving deep into the depths of your being. In this vast ocean of consciousness, you'll discover the treasure of inner peace waiting to be uncovered. As you embark on this journey, remember that it's not about perfection but progress. Each moment of mindfulness, each breath of meditation, brings you closer to your true essence. And in that sacred space, you'll find the peace you've been searching for all along. So, let go of the struggle and surrender to the flow of life. Embrace the present moment with open arms, knowing that within you lies the infinite wellspring of peace. As you walk this path of inner discovery, may you find serenity in every step and joy in every breath. Lesson 9. Nurturing Compassion and Empathy Compassion and empathy are like gentle rain, nurturing the seeds of kindness within us. Imagine a world where everyone understands the power of compassion, where instead of judgment, there is understanding, and instead of indifference, there is empathy. This is the world envisioned by Buddhism, where compassion is not just a virtue but a way of life. In our daily lives, we encounter countless opportunities to practice compassion. It could be as simple as offering a smile to a stranger or lending a listening ear to a friend in need. Compassion is about recognizing the shared human experience, the joys, the sorrows, the struggles, and responding with kindness and understanding. When we cultivate compassion, we begin to see beyond our own self-interests. We start to empathize with the suffering of others, recognizing that their pain is no different from our own. This understanding forms the foundation of genuine empathy, where we not only sympathize with others, but actively seek to alleviate their suffering. Empathy allows us to connect deeply with others, bridging the gaps that separate us. It enables us to walk in someone else's shoes, experiencing their joys and sorrows as if they were our own. In doing so, we dissolve the barriers of ego and separateness, fostering a sense of unity and belonging. Practicing empathy requires openness and vulnerability. It means setting aside our preconceived notions and truly listening to others with an open heart. It involves being fully present, offering our undivided attention and support without judgment or criticism. Compassion and empathy go hand in hand, like two wings of a bird soaring through the sky. Compassion is the deep-rooted desire to alleviate suffering, while empathy is the ability to understand and share in the emotions of others. Together, they form the essence of true kindness and altruism. In Buddhism, the cultivation of compassion and empathy is not merely a personal endeavor, but a collective responsibility. It is through our interconnectedness that we realize the profound impact of our actions on others. By nurturing compassion within ourselves, we contribute to the collective healing and transformation of society. Through simple acts of kindness and understanding, we can create ripple effects of positivity that extend far beyond ourselves. Whether it's offering a helping hand to a neighbor or showing compassion to a stranger in need, every act of kindness has the power to make a difference in someone's life. Compassion and empathy are not limited by boundaries of race, religion, or nationality. They transcend differences and unite us in our common humanity. In a world plagued by division and conflict, they serve as beacons of hope, illuminating the path towards peace and reconciliation. As we journey through life, may we strive to cultivate compassion and empathy in all that we do. Let us sow the seeds of kindness wherever we go, knowing that even the smallest act of compassion has the power to ignite positive change in the world. Together, let us weave a tapestry of empathy and understanding, 
creating a brighter and more compassionate world for all. Lesson 10. The Wisdom of Acceptance In the journey of life, there are moments of joy and moments of pain. Sometimes, things don't go as planned, and challenges arise unexpectedly. In these moments, the wisdom of acceptance shines brightly. Imagine a river flowing effortlessly, adapting to the twists and turns of its path. Similarly, acceptance allows us to flow with the currents of life, rather than resisting them. It doesn't mean we passively surrender to whatever comes our way, but rather we acknowledge reality as it is. Acceptance is like opening a door to inner peace. When we accept things as they are, we free ourselves from the burden of constant struggle and resistance. Instead of fighting against the current, we learn to navigate it skillfully. One of the fundamental teachings of Buddhism is the impermanence of all things. Nothing in this world remains fixed or permanent. Understanding this truth helps us embrace change with open arms. We let go of the illusion of control and surrender to the natural flow of life. Acceptance doesn't mean approval or agreement. It's about acknowledging reality without judgment or attachment. When we accept a situation, we see it for what it is without adding layers of interpretation or resistance. In difficult times, acceptance becomes a powerful tool for healing. Instead of dwelling on what could have been or should have been, we accept the present moment with compassion and kindness. This doesn't mean denying our emotions. Rather, it means holding them with gentleness and understanding. Through acceptance, we cultivate resilience and inner strength. We learn to embrace life's ups and downs with equanimity, knowing that everything is temporary. This doesn't mean we become indifferent or apathetic. Rather, it means we engage with life fully while also letting go of attachment to outcomes. Acceptance is a practice, something we can cultivate and nurture over time. It begins with small steps, like taking a deep breath and acknowledging our feelings without judgment. As we continue to practice, acceptance becomes a way of life, transforming how we relate to ourselves and the world around us. In the words of the Buddha, acceptance is the key to peace. When we accept things as they are, we find peace within ourselves. We let go of the need to control or change external circumstances, and instead, we focus on cultivating peace in our hearts. Acceptance opens the door to forgiveness and reconciliation. When we accept ourselves and others as flawed and imperfect beings, we let go of resentment and bitterness. We embrace forgiveness as a path to healing and liberation. Ultimately, acceptance is a radical act of love, love for ourselves, love for others, and love for life itself. It's a recognition of our interconnectedness with all beings and a celebration of our shared humanity. As we journey through life, may we cultivate the wisdom of acceptance. May we learn to embrace each moment with openness and grace, knowing that in acceptance, we find true freedom and peace. Conclusion. Congratulations. You've embarked on a journey of understanding the profound wisdom behind not focusing on results. Now, let's wrap up this enlightening exploration with a gentle breeze of simplicity and clarity. Imagine life as a river, flowing endlessly, each moment unique and fleeting. In this river of life, we often find ourselves clinging to the banks, desperately trying to control its course. But as we've learned, true peace comes from letting go of the need to control outcomes, instead embracing the flow of life with open arms. Remember, life is not a destination but a journey, filled with twists, turns, and unexpected surprises. By releasing our attachment to results, we can fully immerse ourselves in the beauty of each moment. Think of a time when you let go of expectations and simply allowed life to unfold naturally. How did it feel? Perhaps you experienced a sense of freedom, lightness, and inner peace. This sense of freedom is the gift of non-attachment, a treasure trove of tranquility waiting to be discovered within each of us. 
As we bid farewell to our attachment to outcomes, we welcome a new way of being, one rooted in presence, acceptance, and appreciation for the here and now. Picture a garden where flowers bloom effortlessly, each petal unfurling in perfect harmony with nature. Similarly, when we release our grip on results, we allow our own growth and transformation to unfold organically. Letting go doesn't mean giving up or resigning ourselves to fate. On the contrary, it's an act of courage, an invitation to trust in the inherent wisdom of the universe. Just as a bird soars freely through the sky, unburdened by the weight of worry, we too can soar when we loosen the shackles of attachment. Close your eyes for a moment and breathe deeply. Feel the spaciousness that arises when we release our grip on the future and fully inhabit the present moment. This present moment is where life truly happens, in all its messy, beautiful, and unpredictable glory. It's where we find joy, love, and meaning beyond measure. So, as we part ways, remember this. Don't chase after the mirage of results. Instead, dance with the rhythm of life Trusting that each step, no matter how small, is leading you exactly where you need to be. Embrace the journey with open arms, knowing that every experience, whether labeled success or failure, is a precious opportunity for growth and learning. And when doubts or fears arise, whisper to yourself the gentle reminder, I am enough, just as I am, in this moment. With this newfound wisdom, Go forth into the world with a heart full of compassion, a mind steeped in mindfulness, and a spirit unbound by the chains of attachment. And whenever you find yourself tempted to grasp for control, pause, take a deep breath, and surrender to the flow of life once more. For in the surrender, we discover the true magic of existence, a magic that transcends our limited notions of success and failure. So. My dear friend, may you continue to walk this path of non-attachment with grace and courage, knowing that you are guided by the light of wisdom and love. Thank you for joining us on this journey of exploration and discovery. Until we meet again, may your days be filled with peace, joy, and the sweet serenity of letting go. This is Wisdom Woven, inviting you to embrace the beauty of the present moment and trust in the unfolding mystery of life. Like, comment, share, and subscribe to continue your journey with us. Until next time, stay anchored in the wisdom of non-attachment. Farewell, and may your heart be light as a feather on the winds of change.